Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach, and this video is about crate training. All right guys, we are back with video seven of our beginner dog training series, and I'm just gonna touch quickly on crate training. Really quickly, before we get started, if you are returning to my channel, thank you so much for being here. If you have just started the beginner dog training series, I highly recommend you start from the beginning. The link to the playlist is in the description below. And if you are new here, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you stick around and hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And by the way, I haven't said it yet. My name's Jessica. I'm the Furry Family Coach. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. So let's get right in to this video in the beginning dog trainer series about crate training. So crate training is a process. It is not something that is going to happen overnight. Do not, do not, do not throw your dog in a crate, shut the door and expect them to be okay with it. Crate training is a process and crates are a safe space for your dog. The number one, in fact, I have another video on my channel where I talk about why you should not use a crate. So I will link that in the description below. And just really quickly, I am not anti-crate. In fact, I am pro-crate. Um, but too many people use a crate for the wrong reason. And too many people use the crate incorrectly. And I don't like that. So I want to tell you what it's actually used for and how it can be a very valuable tool for you and how it can completely derail your training and completely derail the bond that you have with your dog. So if you are that person who just gets frustrated, doesn't want to deal with their dog, thinks their dog has done something wrong, which by the way, if your dog has done something wrong, this is a very un this is going to be a very unpopular statement, but I have to say it. If you feel like your dog has done something wrong, it's because you have failed to teach your dog what you expect from them, the, the, whatever the right thing is for them to do. So anytime you feel like your dog has some done something you don't want them to be doing, you need to look back at yourself and say, how can I show my dog and teach my dog what I do want them to do? Punishment does not teach your dog anything. And when you use a crate as punishment, your dog is not learning anything. Dogs are very social animals. So if you throw your dog in a crate and lock them away because you feel like they've done something wrong or you just need a break or you're frustrated or, 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 or whatever may be going on, what's happening is you're punishing your dog. Just by removing them from the family unit, you're punishing them because they are very social creatures. So the only appropriate way to use a crate is by providing your dog with their own home, with their own safe space. This can be a place where they eat their meals. This can be a place where they can relax. In fact, in my home, the crate stays open. The door stays open all the time. Right now, Kim is in her crate and the door is open and she's just laying down waiting for me to get done with my video because She's just relaxing in there. You just relaxing, my love bug? You relaxing? Good girl. I'm not punishing her. I have not told her she had to be in there. I am not shutting the door and forcing her to be in there. This is a safe space for her. She's comfortable being in there. And that is an appropriate way to use the crate. I could shut the door and she would be fine. I don't need to shut the door right now, so why am I going to do that? But a crate should be a safe space and it can be a very valuable tool if you're using it as a safe space for your dog, especially during potty training. Uh, it can be a very good tool. However, as I've already said, if you're using it as punishment, as a time out zone, it should never ever be used for that. The reason that a crate can be a very useful tool for potty training is because Generally, a dog is not going to urinate or defecate where they sleep. So if you properly crate train your dog and acclimate them to the fact that a crate is their safe space, what you're doing is providing them again with a safe space and managing their environment. So if this is something you have never heard of before, go back to the potty training video, which uh, was the video right before this one in the beginner dog training series. Again, if you are brand new to the beginner dog training series, the playlist link is in the description below. I highly recommend you start from the beginning of that playlist and work your way through. When you're potty training, you should be managing your dog's environment and gradually giving them larger and larger spaces 
that they have access to. You don't want to bring your dog or puppy home and give them complete run of the house. That's not going to make for a good potty training routine at all. You should give them a safe space like a crate or a playpen or an X-pen. Maybe um, you've blocked off the kitchen with a puppy gate. That's okay too. As long as you have a safe space that is you're comfortable with being able to easily clean up in that safe space. And then you can gradually give them larger and larger areas of the home that they have access to as they start getting older and they have better bladder control and they get down the whole potty training thing. So when you're choosing a crate for your dog, what size crate should you choose? The size crate you should get should be big enough for your dog or puppy to stand up in and fully turn around without any discomfort, but you don't want it too much larger than that. The reason that you don't want to get a huge crate for a small dog is, again, because I said earlier, dogs typically don't like to use the bathroom where they sleep. So if you have a very large crate and a small dog, they'll sleep on one end and pee or poop at the other, and that's not what you want. You don't want to teach them that it's okay to relieve themselves in the crate. It should be a small like I said, just small enough that they can completely stand up comfortably, they can completely turn around comfortably, and lay down comfortably, and that's about it. So when you take this into consideration, you may, be, you may need to buy multiple crates throughout your dog's lifetime, and that's okay. You can gift one that you no longer need to somebody else, uh, you can sell it maybe, or even donate it to a shelter or rescue. Another option is to get a larger crate that has a divider in it. So as your dog grows, you can move the divider and gradually give them more space. So here are the tips to make crate training go really smooth and easily. The first step is to let your dog explore the crate, but do not ever force them into the crate. Do not ever push them into the crate. Don't ever get them in the crate and shut the door before they're ready. If they are at all uncomfortable, do not do it. The next step is going to be using treats. To You can toss treats into the back of the crate, let your dog explore, walk in, get the treats. Do not shut the door at this point. You're still leaving the door open. Just let them casually walk in and out, get the treats, walk back out if they want to, that's okay. You can spend some time in this step and that's gonna be okay. What we wanna do is get to the point where your dog is completely comfortable and relaxed walking in and out of the crate. Hopefully your dog will walk in the crate and lay down. Once your dog starts getting comfortable walking in and out of the crate using the treat rewards, you're going to want to start adding additional treats inside of the crate so that they spend more time inside of the crate. So instead of tossing one treat in, maybe you toss four or five treats in. That way your dog goes in the crate and spends some time while they're eating. You can also Put, once they're comfortable enough to walk into the crate on their own, you can also put their meals in the crate and let them eat their meals in the crate. But again, don't push your dog past their comfort zone. Doing this is going to set your training way back. Once you feel your dog is comfortable walking in and out of the crate, maybe you staying in the crate for a few seconds, a few minutes, uh, what you're going to want to do next is briefly close the door and open it right back up again. Your dog may get a little startled at this, that's why it's a step all on its own. Once you close the door and immediately open it right back up again, reward. And you can start doing this gradually over time, leaving the door closed a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And we're talking about seconds here and working up to minutes. We're not talking about minutes working up to hours. Right now we're just talking about seconds and working up to minutes. The really key thing here is to make sure you are doing everything possible to ensure that your dog enjoys their time in the crate. And at this point, we should be working up to longer and longer periods of time in the crate. Again, no matter how old your dog is, I never recommend leaving your dog at home or in a crate any longer than four hours. And that's for an adult dog who is fully, who has full control of their bladder and is fully potty trained. Any younger dog, if you have a puppy or if you're still in the potty training phase, it should be much, much less than that. Maybe 20, 30 minutes max at a time while you're potty training, getting your dog back out there. But again, you and your dog are gonna have to work on this and feel each other out with the time frames. Another really key thing, this is the one that I wanna leave you with. Anytime you do, once, once your dog is crate trained and you need to leave your dog for a period of time, maybe you're going to, uh, you have to go run errands and you're going to be leaving them in the crate for two hours. 
anytime you are work anytime you leave your dog in the crate for any period of time make sure that you have properly exercised them first and that they have enrichment while you're gone a general rule of thumb for how long you can leave your dog in the crate is half an hour per month of age once you get to four hours that's it i don't ever recommend leaving your dog alone in a crate any more than four hours at a time. They are gonna need a potty break, they're gonna need an exercise break, you're gonna to wanna to maybe even feed them or give them some sort of enrichment. They, they do need a break. This is a really small space to leave your dog confined in for any long periods of time. All right guys, so those are my tips on crate training with your dog, especially as it relates to potty training. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. Better yet, in the description, you're gonna see a link to join the family. That's my group. You can join the group and you can post pictures, videos. You can let me know what you're working on and maybe if you're struggling with something. If you've had a win, that's gonna be awesome too. That's gonna to be the best way to have a really open dialogue and get help is by joining the group. So check that link in the description below. Also, like I said earlier, if you are new to the beginner dog training series, there is a link to the playlist in the description. I highly recommend you check that out and start from the beginning and watch all the way through the beginner dog training series. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Again, if you are new and you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. When you do, a bell will pop up. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And also there's going to be another video popping up somewhere around here. I really highly, highly recommend that you watch that next. It's going to give you and your dog some really great tips to keep your bond really healthy and strong. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.